Hi, um, again, I'm sorry for the um, pounding, if you hear it, there's construction going, ne going on next door, on the next house. Um, I want to talk about, um, a little bit about the mental, as, as the religion as mental health, the argument that's going on on YouTube. Um, Gary on the FLS channel has, has, has talked about it, but the main, uh, the main proponent that, that I've watched is, um, Live Life 8072, but, um, I kind of want to discuss that a little bit, um, first of all, um, when we talk about, you know, what Gary talks about is that if we are thinking about this Sky Daddy, you know, if we think about, um, if we, you know, think that he's there and we pray to him and think that he, li that he, that he, he's, li he's listening, um, then there's a certain there, there's a certain delusion there's a certain break of function in here. Um, he's well, I believe he used the words you know he's broken. You know I'd be broken. Um, you know I I do believe in this sky daddy. I do I do believe in this god. <clears throat> um, and um, I want to talk about that. And I now I want to talk about um, how atheists do to talk about you know how. They believe that evolution, abiogenesis, and cosmogony, and then their theories of that, um, you know, makes makes them a hundred percent certain that they um, that they believe that God does not exist. Um, and um, I recently watched a video, you know, that of, of a atheist Antonellus who was talking about how we don't we don't have to be a hundred percent percent certain, but if we have all these things that points generally mad majority in this direction that there's that there is no god because all this business could have happened by itself without a god then then yeah i'm not i'm not gonna believe in god and what's being charged to theists being they, they're basically saying that theism doesn't have any science doesn't it doesn't have any anything that you know goes for its case besides the theists who have faith in their in their being in their, in their, in their being a god so um, I would like to, I'd like to, um, kind of discuss that, um, and I would like to kind of discuss a argument called the fine-tuning argument, which is, a, which is a version of the teleological argument for the existence of God, and, um, I'd like to kind of argue that because there is, there is a good amount of science, and there's a good amount of history, and a good amount of a good amount of, of other things that point in the direction of there being a god, likeliness rather than no god, and basically what these 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 arguments for for no god or god boils down to likeliness because we don't know we have no empirical um, empirical evidence for any for for any certainty, uh, so we're, we're basically we're basically we're having this all boil down to likeliness as to whether. There is a a god or not? Now atheists are saying that because of evolution, abiogenesis, and Big Bang cosmogony, um, then there is no god. You know, that's saying that saying that, that because of there, there's the because of all, all these things, there's, there's there's likeliness of there being no god. Now, what is wrong that they're that they're saying is that they're saying that theism has no science, theism has no has no um, no science, nothing that that nothing that point that nothing that works in their favor, argumentally except for faith. Now, um, I'd like to um, first of all, I'd like to discuss an argument uh, which is discussed by Robin by Robin Collins in this book, The Philosophy of Religion by Louis Poyman. Uh Robin Collins discusses a, a, a argument called fine tuning. And I'm going to read, read, read a little bit here. And he has five scientific observations that you know point to that point to things about this universe being fine tuned. And the argument is that if things were fine tuned, if these, if because of how particular these are, and if if these, these things were 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 a little were a little bit different, then um, then this place would not be stable, and that there were, there would not be able to be life here. Um, and uh, the, the and the argument basically is that you know if things were 
so particular like this, so tuned like that, then there, then then it's then it's very likely that there's a that there's a so that there's someone who set those who set those 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 dials or hit that target. Um, so I want to you know re read a couple things from here, which are basically scientific observations of fine, of fine tuning. If the initial explosion of the, of, the, of, the, of the Big Bang had differed in strength by as little as one part in 10 to the 60th power, the, the, the universe would have either quickly collapsed back, back on itself or, or expanded too rapidly for, for star stars to form. In, in either case, life would have been impossible. Um, as John Jefferson Davis points out, a accuracy of one part in 10 to the, to the 60th can can be compared to f to firing a bullet at a one inch target on, on, the, on the other side of of the observable universe, twenty billion light years away, and hitting the, and hitting the target. So that's one thing you know that says that you know if the if the if the, if the Big Bang was differing was different in strength a little bit as one part in ten to the to the sixtieth power, it would it would it would have either collapsed on itself or or expanded too fast and too much, and either way, life would not have been able to form. And that's very, very particular. Second, c calculations indicate that if the strong nuclear force, the force that binds protons and neutrons together in an atom, had been stronger or weaker by as little as 5%, life would be impossible. 5%. Calculations by by Brandon Carter show that if gravity had been stronger or weaker by one part in ten to the forty power, then life sustaining stars like the sun could could not exist. This would life this would most likely make life possible. Okay, again, these things are very 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 particular. Where if it was a little bit different in power or strength or um, forces were a little were a little, little bit a little bit different. This would not be, be be possible. It would not work. For if the if the neutron were were not about one point zero zero one times the mass of the, the proton, all protons would have would have decayed in, into neutrons, or all new neutrons would, would have would have decayed into protons, and thus life would not would not be possible. If the electro if the electromagnetic force were slightly stronger or weaker, life would, would, would be impossible for a variety of different different reasons. Okay, so these are all, you know, some various things here that are very particular. And I'm not, I'm not going to argue that because of this. I mean, I have, a, I have a full, full video talking about this whole article. But my point here is that, you know, through this, um, I'm trying to sort of equate that we're both talking about like likeliness of one worldview or the other. Um, the fact is, the fact that the dials are per perfectly set, or, or that the dart has hit, hit the target, strongly suggests that, that, that someone set the dials or aimed the dart. For it seems enormously imp improbable that such a coincidence could have, could, have, could have happened by chance. Now, what was it just said was five co coincidences that are so particular. Um, although... Individual calculations of fine tuning are only approximate and could be in, in error. The fact that the universe is fine tuned for life is almost, is almost beyond question because of the large number of independent instances of apparent fine tuning. Okay. Now, what I want to say based on this is that I'm not, I'm not trying to use this to argue in my favor of their of their of their of their being a god. Robin Collins does that what does that well in here. But what I'm what I'm trying to say here is that, and we also have history, which shows certain things. Also, if you read, uh, also if you read um, J.P. Moreland, he has a scientific argument for the existence of God, and in a favor of the creation hypothesis. Um, if you read um, a case for creators and all that stuff by Strobel, um, that presents certain evidence. Now this. Shows you know this is not uh, this is not theism having no evidence. This is certain certain evidence for theism in likeliness of there being a god. Now we both have theism and atheism both have evidences 
Now, what is being said by many atheists is that, there, is that theism has no evidence, no factual things, no nothing observed that nothing observed that argues in their in in their favor, and that's not true. What I just said is a certain scientific statements being be, be, being part of an argument that 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 suggests the the likeliness of there being a god. And now, um, in my, in my opinion, because of the fact that we do have these arguments based on ha and having to do with science and history, I think that the argument for religious people being mentally ill because they believe in a god should not work anymore. It's wrong, I think, to to even to even say that um, that we are mentally that are, we are mentally deluded because we, we think that we think that there is a God. Now, based upon this, you can still argue that religious people believing in miracles are mentally ill. You can, you, you can also argue that, that the, the, the people who pray to God um, and thinking that he's hearing them and also re responding and acting on your prayers, you can also argue that that is also delusion and wrong and mentally ill. But because of the fact that we do have arguments, we do have arguments of, among empirical things that, that, that do suggest likeliness, just like yours do suggest li likeliness, then in my opinion that means that the argument of religious people being mentally deluded because of their belief in a god shouldn't even, shouldn't, should, it shouldn't work anymore. It doesn't work. Because we do have arguments in likeliness of God. But we don't have, you know, we don't have um, arguments saying that, that miracles happen. We don't, we, don't have, we don't have arguments saying that, that when we pray, God, that, that we, that when we pray, God, God hears us. You can, you can also argue that, that, that people who pray with this mindset are mentally ill. You, you, you can still argue that. Of course, but the saying that people who the, saying that people who believe in God are mentally ill is no longer um, no longer a, a valid argument anymore because we do have arguments.